you know, people think that it's like a sort of wives' tale, but when you can actually say, no, look, we, we increased forage production by 78% in a year, then all of a sudden it's like, no, this is, this is what real sustainable agriculture is about, it's about soil health. My name is Zach Withers, and me and my brother Ethan have a farm in central New Mexico called Polk's Folly. My brother Ethan is the coolest dude you ever meet, and he's currently uh, making sausage at the shop. So we're in the eastern foothills of the Sandia Mountains. Um, mix pinon juniper mostly, a little bit of ponderosa. We're just shy of 7,000 feet above sea level. We get anywhere from 12 to 18 inches of precipitation every year. This WCR project has really been incredibly beneficial in developing the program around uh, how we manage the waste from our from our animals. So we're diverting, uh, you know, things from the landfill that would otherwise be punching holes in the atmosphere, creating meat, and then we're creating biological soil amendment all at the same time. The funding covered all sorts of things, everything from the cost of transportation for hauling the compost to the different sites, to the compost itself, uh, the soil testing for the sites uh, pre and post compost, the soil testing for the, for the compost itself. There's multiple benefits to this. One, like the compost on the rangeland um, is demonstrating what biological soil amendment can do and the importance of um, all, those little, all those little bugs and critters that we don't pay attention to but are actually the thing that keeps the planet moving. So we started trying to figure out who else can we work with um, who is doing like high quality food production in a sustainable way. And Emily was, you know, right at the top of the list. She's doing all the same sort of things. I'm Emily Cornell from Soul Ranch, which is in the northeastern part of New Mexico outside of Wagon Mound. So we're sort of in the short grass prey where the mountains meet the plains. Uh, we've got a lot of canyon country. We've got a couple major rivers that come together. We're really looking to get that ground covered and sort of increase the amount of biomass that's getting onto the soil surface to help heal up areas that are either recovering from drought or just have been bare for whatever reason. Um, and then also to improve our gains on our cattle as well. Organic matter on the soil surface can really contribute to accelerating that process of succession um, when we're talking about plant species, but also microbial processes at play in the soil. And so to me, I knew that compost seemed like a no-brainer. So I did deal directly with several individuals from Western Sarah via email, but also we had someone out, come out and visit. And they were really helpful in just um, allowing us the, the freedom that we needed to, to operate as producers. And sometimes things change due to weather or circumstances outside of our control. And so they were really great about just being practical. As far as application went, Zach makes the compost up there at Polk's Folly. So we did four different plots, so one control where we didn't put any compost, and then sort of 1x, 2x, 3x um, on the other three plots, and we did triplicates, so there's 12 plots total. Took an afternoon, wasn't too bad. Then we put in grazing exclosures within those plots just to keep uh, grazing animals out. And then I chose a site that was um, it had a little bit more bare area than the surrounding area and it was lies just below a road. The road has starved that area of the water that would have flowed across from the uphill side. And then this is sort of uphill from a riparian area, so it's never great to have, you know, less forage or bare ground near riparian areas. I think the most consistent and positive results we got were in um, water infiltration, like the ability of the soil to absorb water. Um, dramatically increased. I can see a visual difference. I can see that there are, is a greater density of plants, a little bit more diversity of those plants, 
And what I not really notice is that uh, after a rainfall or after a snow event, the moisture stays in those plots longer. After a rain, if you're walking through that field, um, it'll be slushy and muddy and kind of slimy, and you step onto the, onto the compost plots and it's firm and it's not muddy and it, you don't slide around, you don't sink in. So after a snow, a lot of the, you know, you get some sun, everything else would melt and then the, the least amount of compost would stick around and then it would slowly melt and the most amount of compost would still be a white square like days later, which I did not anticipate that at all. It was like really interesting. Doing this trial and this experiment without Western Sahara, not even close to possible. It was entirely uh, like funded and created and generated through the through the grant. Like we would not have been able to pull this off without a, without the WCR grant. This is a, a funding source for producers that's designed for producers, and I think that's really important to understand. If anybody's kind of scared about going out and applying, that um, they're going to work with you, and you're not going to get hung up in some of the details. I would absolutely recommend a Western Sahara grant to any agricultural producer that wants to push the envelope and figure out how to make their um, make their farm more sustainable. It's been educational. It's been uh, it's been fun. Anytime somebody comes onto the farm, showing them the compost plots and talking about it, it just kind of becomes part of the farm tour, and people are into it. You know, it's such a it's such a basic core fundamental part of any organic sustainable agriculture um, and yet we're so far removed from most of that that when people like see it uh, it clicks in a way where they're like oh this is this is right this is how this is how we want the food we eat to be raised <laughs>